Captains of Industry, brought to you by Airtel. Their motto is cutting through complexity and given the state of the markets today, I'd say it's definitely a complex world. No one would ever have imagined that America, the largest economy in the world, would be downgraded or that Europe would be in serious debt. In Africa, we're seeing growth. It's on the up but so too is unemployment. Not only is it a complex world, it's a world of so many ironies. Now, giving us his impressions of the world as we see it today is Moses Hosanna. He's the CEO of KPMG for Africa. As you well know, KPMG is the, the leading global auditing firm, and Moses Hosanna is our captain of industry tonight. Thanks so much for being here with us. As I said, you know, nobody would have imagined that speaking today, mid-2011, the US economy would be downgraded. Are you nervous about what we're seeing internationally? Let out, uh, definitely many uh, business people there out are very nervous. Yeah. Yes, uh, U USA is seen as one of the biggest uh, economy in the world. Yeah. And for it to go through what it's gone through in the last few months, it is actually mm. uh, nerve breaking. But uh, it's not unexpected. If uh, you have been in the economy that has been faced with so many complexities, yeah. as uh, you've said initially, you are bound to, 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 to come up with these difficulties. But I think like any other economy, they will be able to come out of it. I mean, I've asked a lot of accountants who've been on the show, and I've said, who's to blame? People say it's the bankers who took on too much risk. Others say the accountants should have seen it when they were looking at those balance sheets. I think if we all had uh, foresight, <laughs> nobody would be needing <laughs> hindsight. But I think everybody in the chain, uh, the business people out there, the, the CEOs, the board of directors, our self-accountants, I think we all have something to, to do with uh, uh, the complex uh, world that we find ourselves with. Mm -hmm. And we all had uh, some role to play, but I think it's not one uh, person, it's all of us uh, together who could wow. have uh, done something to avoid it. Now going forward, we're hearing some economists saying there's a huge probability of a double dip recession. And I think in South Africa, we just can't afford that. Um, do you think we could go into a double dip? And what do you make of the fact that so many of our local banks are geared towards America, if not South African banks, emerging market banks are geared towards the United States and hence that vulnerability? Mm. Let, let me talk about the, 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 the possibility of the double dip. I think uh, in Africa, you know, for the past few years we've been immune from that yeah. we have a very solid uh, banking system especially in South Africa and when the uh, you know the credit crunch happened elsewhere we didn't see it but if we look at today uh, uh, you know the rent uh, you know climbing yeah. up yeah. and what is happening elsewhere it's a possibility I mean uh, Europe uh, and USA have been in difficult economy for the mm. past few years and our country our companies which are linked mm. with the US uh, and Europe probably uh, find themselves in those difficult situations. You talk about us having a strong banking system and the South Africans are very good at posturing in that way. We've done everything to ensure that we protect our economy. But why is the economy underperforming? I think the economy uh, underperformance, uh, and, and I'm not an economist, let yeah. me first confess, yeah. I think it, it is the interdependence of uh, uh, the global world uh, from one country, one nation to the other. Therefore, if uh, USA cough or, or Russia sneezes, yeah. uh, the other world will get a catch a cold. So yeah. that, that's where w why we find ourselves in the same situation where yeah. we are today. You're very bullish about Africa because obviously you are the CEO for KPMG on the continent and you operate in so many of these new frontier markets. What do you see that's exciting you? Because sometimes I worry whether we're overly zealous about this growth story. Yeah. I think uh, in KPMG, I mean, I've said to my counterparts in US and Europe that uh, Africa is the continent whose time has come. A and I have said that uh, in many forums, you know, in our continent, there are so many opportunities. I mean, you look at the infrastructure, you look at the telecoms. There is no way why the, the world out there, the Chinese, the Indians, yeah. are seeing this huge market, and we as Africans can't see that. Mm -hmm. We are investing in those big uh, mm -hmm. uh, opportunities because we think it's Africa's time. I mean, uh, the continent is set to have a future GDP of 2.6 trillion and consumption and spending of 1.4 trillion dollars by the year 2020. Why do we keep on seeing the images we're seeing today in East Africa, the drought, the, the famine, the poverty? Wh where are these people who are going to be spending 1.4 trillion dollars? 
I think it will happen. Uh, uh, firstly, in my view, if we start by developing the infrastructure, uh, we make sure that uh, y you know all that infrastructure development is there, the power, the utility, the, 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 the telecoms, uh, the, the, the spending will happen. If we look at telecom alone, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Africa is the only one which can actually go up to 500 million subscribers. Uh, elsewhere in the world, it's becoming saturated. That is why big uh, uh, telecom companies are actually seeing the opportunities here. So there will be that spending. Uh, uh, if uh, we, we develop our infrastructure. Okay, so let's, let's talk about closing those deals here because obviously infrastructure is a huge area of mm -hmm. play. You provide advisory services yes. uh, across a uh, variety of spectrum. When investors come in here and mm -hmm. they say to you, you know what, between talking to the government, talking to local investors, mm -hmm. doing feasibility studies, uh, counting the rand, cents and dollars, it just takes too long. Mm -hmm. It is very true. Uh, the infrastructure space, it is uh, it's not a short-term investment, but the, it, it actually has long-term benefits and also long-term beneficiation of, of other uh, uh, industries as well. Uh, our infrastructure team are working closely with governments, working closely also with investors elsewhere uh, I in the world to come up with uh, possibilities of uh, helping these governments uh, to grow. We have a, a project that we're doing in Zimbabwe now, in DRC, mm -hmm. we are in, uh, advising the government in that infrastructure development. So it is a long-term investment, but it's got uh, uh, lots of uh, beneficiation of other industries. Uh, when you said Zimbabwe, the first thing that came to mind is difficulties of this global political agreement, difficulties of getting investment back, the controversy of Mugabe. Mm -hmm. How do you operate in environments like that? With great difficulty, <laughs> with great difficulty, and even our colleagues in Zimbabwe are actually facing that difficulty. But let's face it, uh, uh, Zimbabwe, uh, uh, the economy, if you look at it without the political uh, uh, environment, is one of the greatest uh, economies uh, we have in Sub-Sahara. Mm -hmm. and, and if we can solve the political landscape, mm -hmm. we think it will grow. As you do your work across Africa, you know, I, I would argue or believe that KPMG has some sort of a, a template, a blueprint mm -hmm. that all KPMGs in 140 countries have to operate on. Do you have to use a different code when you enter Africa? Do you have to adapt to local conditions? Definitely, Lerato. We, we, we see Africa as a complex uh, a, a continent, 53, now 54 uh, uh, countries. Mm. We don't see it like others who see it as just one country, one size fits all. Mm. Lots of uh, uh, different political environment uh, and, and also uh, uh, legislation. So from KPMG point of view, our clients who comes there need to know that KPMG will have the same quality, same presence that will give them value for money. How are you going to make the profession relevant? And I'll tell you why. When I think accountant, and that's me, I'm not mm. speaking for anybody else, I think geeks in grey suits sifting through reams and reams of financial statements. It just doesn't look like you're having fun. I wouldn't agree with you more, <laughs> actually. Uh, that's why some of us stop wearing grey suits. <laughs> we wear blue ones or, or black ones. But uh, I think uh, every business out there, Lerato, you would need uh, uh, professional advisors. Mm. Some people accuse us as accountants to say, if we don't have work, we create our own work. Maybe we do. But, but, but the truth about this is that we need to find solutions, clear solutions mm -hmm. that our clients value. And that's why they'll continue to ask us mm. to come and serve them. And that is why we have uh, professional right. services. But what, what does today. relevance mean for you in the 21st century? Because in as much as we're now trying to manage uh, um, a global economy that's very complicated, that's mm -hmm. got lots of incumbent risks, mm -hmm. and we've got the decoupling of the emerging markets, or maybe they're not decoupling anymore. Mm -hmm. We've got new dimensions now. We've got uh, green economies, mm -hmm. climate change, mm -hmm. uh, social entrepreneurship. We've got all these new facets sure. to what is the modern day. How do you keep yourselves relevant? Yeah, I think relevance, uh, Elarato, you're right, it means all of those. For me, uh, relevance means if I go and visit uh, uh, you know, my counterparts in business, the, the, the chief executives who run various banks, various companies out there, 
th they are faced with complexities. Y you know, the world today is unstable, is changing. They would want somebody who's not involved in their business, who understand their business, who can come and say, let me simplify this thing for you. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you how I see it differently. And those gentlemen th and ladies value that kind of advice. Mm -hmm. That's how you should be relevant. Mm -hmm. Give your clients a clear solutions yeah. that they'll value. I'm, I'm glad you just uh, corrected yourself very quickly by adding the ladies because it does speak to the reality that the accounting profession is very slow in terms of transformation. Uh, upskilling women yes. into the sector mm -hmm. and then in South Africa it's also the racial element as well, bringing black people into um, the sector. You've made transformation the hallmark of your leadership of KPMG. How mm -hmm. are you doing? Yeah. Look, transformation at KPMG, uh, we say it's a business imperative. We're yeah. not doing it because we are told to do it. We are doing it because it's a strategic objective to do business. How are we doing? Uh, I think not as good as I would like to do, mm -hmm. but I think we are ahead uh, 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 of the pack. We, we have uh, uh, women in leadership. We've got uh, them at different uh, levels uh, from uh, first clerks to managers to partners. Mm -hmm. But if you ask me, we need to do more. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had I read over the weekend, uh, uh, the, the, you know, the cry of the employment equity report yeah. that has come yeah. out. Yeah. I think as, as business leaders, we have to be ashamed that the 11th report, it's still the same like the fifth, mm -hmm. the first, whatever. Mm -hmm. So transformation for us, it's a business well, imperative. But, but where's the bottleneck, do you think? Do you think the universities are not churning out graduates um, sufficiently to feed into the economy? Do you think it's the problem at high school level? You know, I'll tell you, as a, as a mm -hmm. student mm -hmm. in, in high school, maths was probably my most intimidating subject. Hmm. Lerato, I think uh, it's a bit of both. If I look uh, specifically in the accounting profession where I'm involved with many other uh, accountants, uh, they, uh, from psycho point of view, uh, we've got uh, a CA, mm -hmm. a, a, a trust that we actually help people to come up. If you look from, the, from our education system from the primary and high school level, mm -hmm. you write with mathematics, there's a struggle there. When I grew up, mm. I mean, uh, uh, I, I, I never knew about business. Mm. The first time I learned about business is when I was uh, already at, at university. Whereas uh, it, uh, an ordinary white uh, student yeah. uh, knows about a checkbook, you know, you know, they grow up in that environment. Our universities also are actually not uh, churning enough uh, 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 students with mathematics and, uh, and also at the right level mm. that we need. I in the profession uh, but we need to work harder we can't say uh, 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 all is lost we need to work hard and make sure that uh, you know the, 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 the profession reflects the demographics right. of the country all right we'll continue speaking on this tag we're speaking to the CEO of KPMG for Africa Moses Hosanna now he suffered a personal setback in late 2007 or thereabouts people said it would affect his standing in business it would affect the reputation of KPMG we're gonna find out how he's turned that adversity into a strength as a business leader stay with us